Remember in the previous video we already did the initial entry when we issued the bond to the bond holders. I showed it to you using the net method in which case we only have an account called bonds payable and I also showed you what it would look like under the gross method when we use the discount account as a contra liability account. What entries now will we make when we make the first interest payment to the bond holders on June 30th, 2021? In order to determine that, we have to do an amortization schedule. 2. Prepare the amortization schedule for the first two years, 21-22, of the bond's life. Round all amounts to the nearest dollar. Now, I'm only doing two years because this is very repetitive and I really don't want to do eight rows of this. The first two years will include four payments, so I think you'll have a pretty good idea by the time we get to the end of it exactly what you're doing. All right, I always like to start with the date that I issued the bond. So that's January 1st, 2021. I don't use any of these columns yet. I just want to note the present value today at January 1st, 2021. 139,012 dollars. Now, I'm going to move on to the first payment, which is on June 30th, 2021. How much cash will we have to pay? Well, the cash is always calculated as the face amount multiplied times the coupon rate divided by the number of interest payments per year. Let's just do this calculation down below. Face amount multiplied times the interest rate on the bond divided by the number of payments per year is equal to $1,500. That's how much cash we'll have to pay our bond holders on June 30th, 2021. Let's put it in the chart. Now, for the interest expense, we're going to take the current present value and we're going to multiply it times the market rate divided by the number of interest payments per year. Let's page down and see that calculation. Remember, we need the present value, $139,012. Multiplied times the market rate, divided by the number of payments per year. This is going to be equal to, and we're rounding this to the nearest dollar, $2,780. That's the interest expense. Let's move up, put it in the chart. Again, I'm rounding it to the nearest dollar. What is the difference? Now, sometimes students are like, oh, I'm going to take the interest expense and deduct the cash, or I'm going to take the cash and deduct the interest expense. It makes absolutely no difference which one you choose, but I always like the difference to be a positive number. So I'm going to just take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. So this is $1,280. Now, remember, in four years' time, well, in three and a half years' time, we have to pay these bondholders the $150,000. So as we move through time, the present value is going to increase. So this difference is going to be added into the present value, increasing the bond payable amount to $140,292. Let's do the entry. Everything we need for the entry is looking at us right now. This is the information, the cash, the interest expense, and the difference. Let's move down, do the entry. Remember, it's June 30th, 2021. What does the company get? They get the use of somebody else's money, the bondholder's money. And whenever we say the word use, we know it's an expense, debit interest expense. The interest expense is the column that says interest expense, $2,780. What do we give away? Well, we give away cold hard cash because we're going to pay the bond holders $1,500. Where does the difference go? Don't forget we're using the net method right now. So the difference would go into the bond payable. It makes sense that we're crediting the bond payable because we know that the bond payable has to go up to $150,000 because that's what we're going to pay the bond holders in three and a half years time. If the company was using the gross method, what is the only thing that would change in this entry? Instead of crediting the bond payable, we would credit the discount on bond payable. Let's look at a T account to see what's happening to the bond payable. We would start with our first entry for the opening balance. That was on January 1st. Then the entry we just did 
caused a credit to the bond payable of $1,280. If we did interim reporting at June 30, 2021, we would show $140,292 on our Statement of Financial Position under Non-Current Liabilities. Notice something interesting. The value in the bond payable is exactly equal to the present value in our chart. Let's continue with the amortization schedule. We're now at December 31, 2021. The cash amount is not going to change. It's still going to be $1,500. But the present value has changed, and therefore the interest expense calculation will change also. Let's move down and do the calculation with the new present value of 140292 Remember, multiply times the market rate divided by the number of interest payments per year. This is equal to $2,806, rounded to the nearest dollar. Let's put it in the chart. Now, let's calculate the difference. $2,806 minus $1,500 is equal to $1,306. Again, we're going to add it into the present value to calculate the updated present value at December 31st, 2021. $141,598. Let's do the entry. December 31st, 2021. We're going to do the exact same entry, but all that's going to happen is two of the amounts will change. We're still going to ask ourselves, what did we get? We got the use of somebody else's money. And that's interest expense, $2,806. What did we give away? We gave away cash. And we gave away the same amount we did before. Where does the difference go? It increases the value of the bond payable because eventually we have to be at $150,000 face value. That's $1,306. Let's look at the T account for the bond payable. Let's flow through the entry we just did. We're going to credit bonds payable for $1,306. What would be the total? $141,598. Exactly what we have on our chart. This is the amount that we would report under non-current liabilities on the Statement of Financial Position at December 31st, 2021. Under the net method, of course. I'm going to continue with this question in the next video.